Hey everyone, Brian here. I've posted revision 1.4 of my book, The Fundamentals of Control Theory. If you're a supporter already, you can download it through the link in the description. And if you're not yet a supporter, all it takes is a donation of any amount to become one, and then you get the book and all future releases. More about that at the end of the video. But for now, let's walk through the new section of the book and finally complete the chapter on transfer functions. We left off at section 2.7, where we're putting everything we've covered in this chapter together to get a good understanding of what a transfer function is and how it can be used. Hopefully by the end of this chapter, when you see a transfer function, you'll see more than just a polynomial fraction that is a function of s. Instead, you'll be thinking to yourself, this must be an LTI system, or this is the impulse response of the system in the s domain. To really get this to sink in, let's bring back the rolling cart problem from earlier in this chapter. Recall that we generate a mathematical model of the system, also known as the equations of motion, by summing the forces acting on the system. The process of generating a system model is called system identification. Summing the forces on a system is just one way to create a model. There are many others that you will be exposed to as a control engineer, so we'll cover it in detail in future chapters. For now though, let's just accept this model and continue on with transfer function. This system model is perfect to represent as a transfer function. It's an LTI system that has a single input and a single output. And based on the definition of the transfer function, we need to take the Laplace transform of its impulse response. Now doing that is fairly easy. We can just replace the input force F with the impulse function. Now the output X is the response of the system to the impulse or the impulse response. But instead of just solving for X in the time domain, which could be hard and time consuming, we can just convert the entire differential equation into the S domain and solve for the response there. This is a simpler operation than you might think because the Laplace transform of the terms in these types of linear systems almost always show up in the standard Laplace transform tables you can find anywhere on the internet and in books. Now this might feel like cheating your way through the problem, but as long as you understand the mathematics of what you're doing, then getting the result from a table is really no different than using your calculator to multiply two large numbers. You understand how to do it, but this is a faster way to get at the answer. So now we can replace each term with its s domain equivalent and solve for the response x of s. This is the impulse response in the s domain, which by definition is the transfer function. Something crazy to think about here is that we solved for x of s by doing a division in the s domain and therefore it's equivalent to a deconvolution operation in the time domain. Just imagine all the complex mathematics we avoided because we're in the s domain. Once you have your transfer function, we can apply different input functions to it to see how the system would respond. Just for fun, let's apply an impulse to our system. Well, the Laplace transform of an impulse is one, so we just multiply our transfer function by one to get its response. It should be obvious that the impulse response is our transfer function because that's the definition of it. But what if we wanted to know the step response of our system? First, we need to represent the step function in the S domain. Basically, we need a system whose impulse response is a step function, which we can solve for, or again, just look it up in a table, and you'll find it to be 1 over S. Now, 1 over S happens to be the S domain representation of an integrator. This makes sense if you think about when you integrate an impulse in the time domain, you get a step. It jumps to one immediately because the area under the impulse is one and then just stays there for the rest of time. We can now think about applying a step function as a two-step process. First, an impulse produces a step through one over s and the step produces a step response through our cart's transfer function. The total transfer function for the system with a step input is just the multiplication of 1 over s and the cart's transfer function. Notice that we've retained the definition of a transfer function. Impulse goes in, and impulse response comes out. If you've been exposed to transfer functions before, you might have heard that a transfer function is the output divided by the input of a system. And yet, I keep saying that it's the impulse response of a system in the s domain. Well, they both produce the same transfer function, so you can use either method to solve for it. But taking the output and dividing by the input says nothing of the underlying mechanism that makes transfer functions work. I would use the division method to solve for transfer functions in certain cases, for sure, because it's so easy. But just remember why that works. And to illustrate it, I walk through an example right here. 
We now know that we can apply any forcing function that can be represented in the S domain to our CART system, but the power of transfer functions goes beyond that. We can use transfer functions to string together small systems to create larger, more complex systems. For example, imagine we didn't apply a force directly to our CART, but instead it was wind propelled with a sail. The CART still has the same transfer function, but now we have two additional ones that model the wind and one that models the force through the sail. By combining them together, we can predict the overall motion of the cart to the specified wind speed profile. We can also simply add new parts to the system, like a radar gun for measuring the cart's position. Just tack on another transfer function that converts the cart's true position to its measured position, which is pretty awesome. This knowledge of combining and adding systems together should change the way you think of block diagrams. Instead of just abstract ways of visualizing and organizing a system, you can actually think of them mathematically, which we'll cover in the next chapter. Also, transfer functions allow us to perform some pretty cool system analysis to determine stability and system performance, and gives us a way of designing controllers to manipulate systems. So just think of that as a bonus thing to look forward to. Now the last section in this chapter has a few questions that will help you practice what you've just learned, and some of the questions are more open discussions that have links to a place where you can share your ideas and see what other students have thought of. A big thanks to all of my readers who have offered suggestions and pointed out errors in this chapter. If you find anything that's wrong or needs clarification, please give me feedback by going to my online ticketing system through JIRA. Through that site, you can write out what you think should be fixed or whether you'd like to be credited in the book or not. You can also go to that site to see what other errors people have found for any release of the book. Thanks once again. And if you have supported me in the past through Konos, you don't need to wait to read the new updates. You can just click the link in the description below and download this updated book right now for free. If you aren't a supporter and you'd like the book, then all you have to do is go to the link and for any amount you choose, either one time or monthly, you can download this book and all future releases. If you want the book, but you really don't want to give me any money, or if you're in a country that doesn't support PayPal, then you could just get a copy from one of your friends, or if you ask me nicely, I'll just send it to you. Now I'm releasing this under a Creative Commons license, so you are welcome to share the book with as many people as you like. My hope is that it spreads to all engineering students, and through everyone's collective comments and questions, I can create something that is truly helpful to learn the subject.